I'm not a, I'm not really from the uh, blogging internet type of generation. Um, I'm kind of old school. And I suppose all that stuff really has some value to it. But as I wrote recently, um, it really, it really just burdens my heart. You know, you see all these young men blogging <laughs> um, and fighting over theological nuances. And uh, in a way, many of them haven't lived long enough to even know or at least experience what they're talking about. And we'll sit there and we'll, we'll fill up the Internet with this kind of stuff when, when there's literally billions of people who have not heard the gospel. I mean, it's, it's insane. Um, if you're listening to this and you're a young man, um, if you're a young man, this is probably not your time to write a book and change the world or have a blog that gets hits from all over the planet. This is your time to prepare yourself to become a man of God. Not to be on the Internet, but to be alone with God in prayer until He pours out His Spirit on you and makes you a useful servant. And then go out and don't, don't be involved in pouring water on a land that's saturated. Go out with your life and preach the gospel to the nations that, do, that don't know Christ. Why be alive? Um, the, the need is tremendous. But I'm not going to tell you that the need is so tremendous and God won't get it done without you. God will get it done without you. But what a loss. What a loss of joy. You know, I invite you to a life of just real sacrifice and a life of joy unspeakable and full of glory. Some of you young men, you need to think about this. You need, to, you need to think about going out there and preaching the gospel, suffering for Christ and relishing that suffering. Now, I'm 49 years old and my body is broken into a million pieces. Um, like Robert Murray McShane said, you know, the Lord gave me a message and a horse and, I've, I've, and I've, I've killed the horse. And I feel that way, but I can tell you this, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. He's worth dying for, young men. And don't waste your life trying to be a theological expert to a bunch of people who already probably know more than you do. Get out there and preach the gospel. Go to the fields. Go to the places where it's dark. Preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's, you know, right now, I'm just rejoicing in what God's doing in India and Nepal, but there's Tibet. You know, God, I ask God, when are you going to open the door for Tibet and, and China? And, and when are you going to open the door for, for Mongolia? A friend of mine out in California, an acquaintance of mine, Larry Pan, he has on his, uh, on his website or whatever, he said that he would rather be on the front lines preaching than jostling for prominence on the stage. Young men, go somewhere and die that only God and hell will know your name. God because He loves you. And His Spirit is powerful upon you in hell because hell hates you. Go somewhere and preach the gospel. You know, I, I sometimes read the, the, the Puritans and, well, I, I like the Puritans a lot. And um, Martin Lloyd-Jones and, and Charles Spurgeon. And, and then I look at the modern day preachers that we have been so blessed with. Uh, you know, men like John MacArthur and and John Piper and Joel Beakey and so many brilliant men, Wayne Grudem and, and all these men. They're older men and they've studied a lot and God's given them a voice. Um, young men, don't, don't try to, to be them, at least not now. And... Uh, don't think that America needs you so much. Uh, 
you know, it's better to sometimes to be a, uh, you know, if I preach in the United States, I'm just, I'm just another preacher. But uh, to go overseas and preach where no one's preaching. Uh, even if you're as pitiful a preacher as I am, you're the preacher. <laughs> um, go somewhere where uh, John MacArthur and John Piper are not. And preach the gospel and pray and intercede. You know, all the men that I've ever studied, um, all of them, I, I, it's hard for me to find a common denominator in their lives. Some of them were more Calvinistic, others not. Uh, some of them were um, well known and seemed prosperous and others seemed to die as martyrs and no one knew their name. They're all so different, but I found one thing in common and that was their life of prayer. Um, prayer, enduring, persevering prayer. You know, who cares about what man knows your name? You know, the question is, does God know your name? And secondly, does our arch enemy know your name? Does he hate you with a great hatred? Not because you're some well-known preacher, but because on your knees you fight him. On your knees you wrestle with him. You've grabbed hold. You need to be a man of prayer. And because missions like India and Nepal, everywhere else, it's, it's based, it advances on prayer. You know, there's a few things that I've never heard. I've never heard an old man say that he wished he had spent less time with his wife and children. They always say the opposite. I've never met an old preacher who regretted spending too much time in prayer. But just about everyone I've ever met has regretted not spending enough time in prayer. You know, you, you, if you know the Word really well, and boy, you're, you're just perfect in your thinking and your logic is pristine, but you're not a man of prayer, you're not worth two cents in the kingdom of heaven. You're just not worth two cents in the kingdom of heaven. You'll be full of a lot of knowledge and proud and no power. No power. And I pray that you would not jostle for prominence on America's stage. That you'd go and die somewhere for Christ and that your name would be known in heaven. That you'd be a man of prayer that you'd study deeply, not in order to preach to other brilliant men, but to preach properly to those who have never heard and to pastors whom God has raised up in foreign lands who've never had the privilege of studying as you have had the privilege to study. Well, this was impromptu. I got back, I guess it was yesterday from India and Nepal, and uh, tomorrow I head out to the strange land of uh, California to preach, so I'll be needing your prayers. And then uh, when I get back, I'm uh, going to have a, several weeks just to uh, kind of uh, get back in the groove of things here at Heart Cry, and, and especially to get back with my, with my family, with my wife and my three little children. Uh, please, I covet your prayers my life for whatever it is. It depends upon the prayers of the saints. So please pray for me and pray for us and uh, pray for Nepal and India and all the other countries of the world um, that Christ's name will be great among the nations from the rising to the setting of the sun and that he will receive the full reward for all his suffering. God bless you. Have a great day. Please visit our website at heartcrymissionary.com 
There you will find information about the ministry, our purpose, beliefs and methodologies, and extensive information about the missionaries we are privileged to serve.